How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome to a special video that I want to put out for everyone going through EA's roster update for NHL 24, their most recent rosters, the ones that you are pretty much starting the game with, the October 16th rosters that have just come out from EA, including Adam Fantilli putting him on the Blue Jackets, including Connor Bedard putting him on the Blackhawks, all the right players in the right places to start NHL 24. Now that I now have the PlayStation 5. Again, a huge thank you to Mark for providing that to the channel. We got the new microphone thanks to a lot of donations as well. We are ready to rock and roll for NHL 24 franchise mode, but we're waiting for the patch. The patch will allow me to make uh, contract alterations and factor in LTIR into the teams that don't have it in franchise mode. So that is the last thing I'm waiting for to start the actual franchise mode simulation. But in this video, while we're still waiting on that, I want to do two things. Number one, I wanted to critique and go through and provide my thoughts on all of the overalls and potentials of all of the NHL players in this most recent roster update to begin NHL 24. The second thing that I want to do in this video is provide you with a quick look without me talking, just scrolling through quickly at every player in NHL 24, their overall, their potential in the AHL, in Liga, in Ice, in the Alsvenska, skin everywhere. I always remember when I was younger wanting to go through a game you know, looking at like NHL 13, 14. Do I like this game? This player that I really want? Is he in it? Do I like, you know, just things I was curious about without having to buy the game and go look at. And I could never quite find that video that, that went through every player in the league. So that's exactly what I'm putting out here. So go ahead and use the timestamps at the bottom if you just want to see a little bit about the SHL or a little bit about the QMJHL prospects who are out there. I won't provide my opinions on those but I'll just be putting my opinion on the NHL rosters. So all of those potentials, all those prospects, I'll be going through those and talking about what I will be fixing. I'll put out a separate video when the patch comes out about what my roster looks like. Here are the alterations that I have made. This is just me going through and giving my initial thoughts. I've barely looked at these potentials and overalls at all. So it's quickly giving my thoughts on each team, things that I probably would change. In my own rosters, I will be going through and saying, listen, Listen, this player was a top five in blocked shots last few years. I'm not giving him 88 shot blocking. I'm giving him 97 shot blocking. Stuff like that. Anze Kopitar's defensive awareness is lower than Connor McDavid's. I'm fixing that. Those are the type of fixes that I make. Not huge overhauls necessarily. Also keep in mind as I go through these potentials, if the player is 27 years of age or older, the potential doesn't really matter. What I care about more for that player would be the overhaul overall. So for example, we have a guy like Cam Fowler, who's low elite. You might be saying, oh no, he's really top four. His potential is low elite so that within a simulation that goes for a few years, he won't regress too quickly. If he already starts as a top four defenseman, he might be regressing to a top six within a year or two. By starting his potential off as, as exact elite, not low elite, exact elite, his overall will stay higher for longer as opposed to regressing very quickly. A guy like Alex Kalorn, who's top nine at 34, he will see regression at a faster rate than if his potential was elite. Keep in mind, the potential is only what they're going to grow into if they're 26 years of age or younger. 27 or older is more of a maintenance of overall as opposed to this is who they are and this is what they could grow into. It's more just a maintaining of what they already have. So with that disclaimer in mind, let's get this party started, ladies and gentlemen, with the October 16th rosters on HL24. Some players who are still not in the game that will require creation, but for what EA has given us, let's start off with the Anaheim Ducks. Trevor Zegers here starting off as a medium elite I don't mind that. Same for Troy Terry. Not many, not much I would have to say about the Ducks. I think Mason McTavish as a high top six could maybe be a medium elite kind of guy, but there's not a huge difference between the two and I don't mind the high elite. Medium elite for the uh, high top six, excuse me. Medium elite for Jamie Drysdale makes sense for me. Ryan Strom, again, because he's over 27, I don't mind the medium top nine there or exactly 
stack top nine. Uh, down the list here, I don't mind any of this. Uh, Isaac Lundstrom with top nine. I think he's still a guy who could have some growth in there, so I think that's fair as well. Minchikov, this is going to be an exciting one for the Ducks this season. He's medium -league. I think that's an appropriate potential for him. We could go deeper. We could look at the, the attributes for every single player. I'm not going to be doing that. I'll just be looking at overalls and potentials. But of course, the deeper level would be to be look at the attributes of each player and then make those tweaks on an even more minute level which is not quite what i'm doing in this video so that's about it for the ducks here nothing that really stands out to me too too much i think everything's quite fair the goalies here gibson still with elite potential but the 86 overall i think is fair dosto with 79 overall medium starter i think is fair as well not much to say about the ducks i think this is all good in my opinion for the most part arizona coyotes clayton keller medium elite 89 overall i wouldn't even mind seeing him at a 90 overall i think clayton keller is that that good. I'm glad to see them at an 89 and not like an 87. I think that would be a big slap in the face. I think 89 is fair, but if you had told me 90, I wouldn't have been upset about that either. Schmaltz 86, well deserved. Dursey at an 84, I like that. Dumba at an 84 might be a bit high, but he does have the potential to kind of see some more life now that he'll have more top four minutes, I would think, in Arizona. Michelli 84 is a great um, boost to what he was from NHL 20. 23 for his great rookie season. Lawson Krause at high top nine, I think makes sense as an 83 overall who has such high physical attributes kind of boosting his overall. High top nine as opposed to medium top nine, I think does make the most sense for him. I think JJ Moser at 83 overall with medium top four is nice as well. Jason Zucker, Barrett Hayton still has some potential at medium top six. I like this for Hayton. I think some people would be tempted to put low top six, but I think medium top six for Hayton does make sense. Valimaki, Kerfoot, medium top six for Kerfoot. I don't think he's ever really been a top six guy. So I don't think it makes sense for guys who have never been there to have that potential at getting into their you know late 20s, early 30s. I'd probably still see him at top nine so that he wouldn't regress. He would just kind of stay in that top nine range. Again, I won't split hairs on little things like that too, too much. Nick Bugstad, Okari, Logan Cooley. There he is, 80 overall, medium elite. One of the big ones that we were waiting for in this roster update Logan Cooley very exciting player already four star puck skills four star senses the physical understandably the lowest of all of his attributes the defense will come with time as well I think he has a very good two-way playmaking ability so Logan Cooley that's a little bit more about him the new guys like him like Fantilli I'll take a moment to look at their attributes individually uh, and that's about it. Uh, Shea Weber still out here as well. So you see when I would be doing my rosters, Weber, Voracek, Little, they'd all be transferred off the team. But here they still are in Arizona. Goaltenders, I'd be curious. Okay, so Vimalka's an 84 overall, which is higher than I thought he would be. But with medium fringe starter potential. Interesting how they balance that. I don't mind it. I don't mind. I'd maybe put high. Well, he's 27 now. So I guess fringe starter works with a bit of the higher overall. Yeah, that works for Arizona. No big tweaks for me there going through the Coyotes. I think they gave nice respect to Keller, to Michelli, to Schmaltz. The guys who deserved some boosts, they got them. So, so far, so good. Boston Bruins, woohoo, 95 for David Pasternak with medium franchise potential. I don't mind the medium franchise for Pasternak, but I just hate that it's so rare. Like, I think Pasternak, Crosby, McDavid, and McKinnon... Uh, I think like even Dowdy and Kopitar, but it's like very few players in the entire NHL have the franchise tag. We'll see as we go. So I don't mind Pasternak having it. I think Kucherov too, but I'd like to see more players with it. So McAvoy, medium elite. I like to see him at high elite, actually, if he's still under 27. I think high elite for McAvoy is very well deserved. I think he's a top 10, even maybe lower defenseman in the NHL. So 92 overall for him. Marchand, 91. Lindholm, 88. Carlo, 85 is a bit higher than I thought he would be, but you know what? For the 90 shot blocking, 93 stick checking, and the five star physical, that's where he gets his overall, even, you know, despite the two and a half star puck skills and senses. So it works out in that sense. You gotta remember that overall isn't who's better than who, it's what the attributes give, right? So DeBrusque at an 84th medium top six, I suppose that's fair. Kind of like a, not quite a Barrett Hayton thing, but a prospect with a lot to prove and still the capacity to prove it. 
Zaka, meanwhile, is low top six, and I think he's kind of having a, a larger role on the Bruins, and he's signed, they're com more committed to Zaka, so I would have liked to see medium top six for Zaka, I think. JVR still in 83, is that just because of the shooting? JVR, I'd probably bring the defensive awareness and stick checking down a little bit on JVR. Grizzlick, I think I, Coil at medium top nine, I think he could be medium top six. Shattenkirk, Geeky, Frederick, Forbort, Lucic is out here at a 79. Poitras is, is very interesting as well as a rookie. Matthew Poitras, who was a second round pick in 2022, playmaking centerman. He definitely has the potential to be someone who gets a big boost in future roster updates. High top six potential for him. Zaboral at a 78 only, okay. Beecher's at a medium top nine. Beecher, who was a first round pick in 2019. John Beecher, power forward with medium top nine potential. If we look at the goalies here, Allmark's a 90, yes. So Allmark's a 90, but only starter potential, which means in a simulation, it would make sense to see him kind of in that probably 85 to 88 range after a year or two. Meanwhile, Swayman with high starter, could get into those high 80s sooner rather than later. Within a couple seasons, if you're doing a Bruins simulation and both these goalies are signed, you would likely see Swayman swap with Allmark in the 1A, 1B. But uh, two very good overalls for two very good goalies. Swayman's numbers may deserve higher than 86, but it's the sample size that would need to go up first. So over to the Buffalo Sabres now, Tage Thompson. He's medium elite. I wouldn't mind seeing high elite for Tage Thompson. I know we're only like a couple years from removed or maybe three years removed from him being like a semi bust, but I think he's proved himself enough over the last two years to say he's the real deal. And you know, you know there's the 91 overall to prove it. I wouldn't have been opposed to seeing high elite potential for him though. But Tage Thompson at a 91 is very well deserved. Darlene at a 91 with high elite potential, I think that's great. Jeff Skinner up to an 87, he's back. I know in past games, was he as low as an 83, 84 in past games? He's got five star shooting, four and a half star puck skills, five star senses. So Jeff Skinner, he's back baby. Meanwhile, Alex Tuck is the same overall as Skinner and he gets top six potential. So I would like to see Tuck with elite potential. I think he's pretty close, if not better than Jeff Skinner. So if you told me that Tuck was 88 and Skinner was 86, I wouldn't have uh, been upset at that. Dylan Cousins, medium elite, 86 overall. Again, maybe you could argue high elite, but the higher overall kind of offsets it. If he was an 84 with high elite versus an 86 with medium elite, it would probably come out to the same thing eventually. But Buffalo's committed to him long term. He'll be with the Sabres for a very long time. And I like seeing that he's an 86 overall to start this game. Game. Same with Owen Power. Maybe it's a bit too high, a bit too fast. I think he had a great rookie season. If you had told me he was an 84, I wouldn't have minded. An 85 kind of puts him in a new category when it comes to defensemen in EA land, but I can accept an 85 overall. High elite though for Owen Power, I do think it is a bit early. Don't get me wrong, I think Owen Power is amazing, but if you're going to tell me that Cousins is medium elite and Thompson is medium elite, I'm not sure if Power is necessarily high elite. Again, it's not who he is, it's the standard of what EA has set. That's what I look for in these rosters. I find they're kind of inconsistent in who who's high, who's medium, that type of thing. Casey Middlestat at an 83 with low top six. I think that is a perfect description of him. Same for Victor Olofsson at a medium top nine. Johnson has that elite potential just so that he won't uh, regress too quickly. Jack Quinn, 82 with medium top six. I like it. Connor Clifton at an 82. That might be a little bit high, honestly. I think Clifton, ha I don't know. He might be more in that 81 range. I, I could see Samuelson being an 82, though. I think that fits okay. Tyson Jost, Kyle Pozo, JJ Paterka is an 81 with medium top six potential. Lots of good young pieces in Buffalo. Same for Peyton Krebs, 80 overall. Still medium top six. Okay. But I don't know. I don't know. You're going to tell me Quinn, Paterka, and Krebs are all medium top six? I don't know. Yoki Haru, Greenway, Zemgis, Bryson, Zach Benson, medium elite for Zach Benson. Listed as a center, but I believe he's playing the wing. 
But yeah, he has medium lead potential at 77 overall. I think that's great to see. Goaltenders in Buffalo, we have Uko Pekalukin at an 82. Eric Comrie at an 80. So Devin Levi is an 80 overall with medium elite potential. Here's how the attributes look for him. Three and a half, three and a half, and four stars. 88 speed, 88 agility. Lower on the poise, uh, the rebound control, the glove high. So Devin Levi at medium elite does make sense, but... In the past, like, I remember when Igor Shosturkin had played, like, only how, how maybe, like, 8 or 12 games in his first season, and then his first full year to start, what was it, like, NHL 21, 22, I don't even remember by now, he was an 86 overall. So, Devin Levi, very small sample size, but I think he could be higher than an 80. I would probably have started him at an 82, maybe Lukanen at an 81, and Comrie at an 80. So I think that would be an addition that I make. Even though he'll grow quickly, I think he would start slightly higher than an 80 overall. 80 overall is kind of fringe for goalies, and I know Levi hasn't proven a lot yet, but again, it comes into the standards. If the standard of an 80 is a certain thing and an 82 is another certain thing, I think that Devin Levi could be more in that 82 category. Moving now to the Calgary Flames, Elias Lindholm, medium elite at 89 overall. Jonathan Huberdeau, you know, he had a tough season in Calgary. He's still a medium elite, but he has dropped down to an 88. So I think that's fair enough. Keep the potential, but drop the overall. Allow him to kind of have to earn it back. I don't mind it. Mackenzie Wieger, 87 at medium elite, that's fine as well. Anderson, I think that's nice respect for him as an 87. Kadri, 86. You know, he's only like a season removed from that crazy year that he had in Colorado. So I don't know if I see him as an 86. I think he's still closer to that 87, 88 category. Maybe at least 87. I think Kadri could be in that conversation more than 86. Hannafin, Tanev, Manjapane at medium top nine potential. I think you could put him for top six. Backlund, Zadarov, Dubé, Coleman, Shrankovic at an 82 with medium top six. Shillington, Ruzika, he's been doing very well, Ruzika, in the top six for Calgary to start the season in the real world. So I wouldn't have minded him. Well, you know what? He was already in the high 70s, I think, last year. So an 81 is a big jump. I think he could be a candidate to get more growth as the year goes on. Jacob Pelletier, Osterley, Greer, Hunt, Coronado. I think Coronado could be a higher overall to start as well. If Logan Cooley is an 80, I think Coronado could probably be in that 78, 79. If guys like Cooley and Fantilli are starting in the NHL at as 80 overall kind of guys. I think Coronado could be more in the 78, 79 overall category. He is going to be a full-time NHLer this season. He's playing top six, middle six minutes. I think he could be more in that 78, 79 category, as I said, kind of like Pelletzi type of thing. Rooney, Gilbert, all right. Goaltending, Markstrom did take a bit of a hit down to an 86 overall, still medium elite. Vladar is at an 83. Three with fringe starter potential. I think that works well. Markstrom, probably more in the 87 overall for me. I know he had a bit of a tough year. But, you know, most of these things that I'm saying are usually about, like, one overall off. I wouldn't say I have any huge issues with anybody just yet. Just my, you know, pretty quick thoughts. Overall seem mostly fair and potential seem mostly fair. So far, so good. Now, here in Carolina, we got Ahu at a 90 overall. I'd probably put him at high elite. Same for Shveshnikov, 89. I'd probably give him high elite. Nature already an 89 overall is a bit much for me to put him on that same category yes he just had a 71 point season incredible great stuff but to say that he is 89 overall already medium lead is okay but I think he'd be closer to the 87 overall kind of category like if Kadri's gonna be at an 86 I don't know if I see Natchez at an 89 I think this is the first one where I would say I'd make an adjustment and it would be more than one overall not that he won't get there not that he won't get there even this season, but to start this year, I don't think I see him on the same level as Shveshnikov overall wise. 89 is pretty big. That's Clayton Keller numbers right there. I don't think one really good season is enough to kind of get there in my opinion. Slavan on 88 is good. Very nice to see some respect on his name. Burns 87, Pesci 86, so three great D-men right there. Teravainen 86 I think is fair enough after he's been struggling. I think he was an 87 or an 88 in the past, so 86 is okay. 
Orlov, Shea, Bunting with low top nine potential. Doesn't upset me too, too much, but I wouldn't have minded seeing top six for Bunting. Even though he's not a top six player necessarily, he doesn't have to be. It's just that potential. He's shown it. He could do it in the right simulation with the right ice time. Kakanyemi, 83 with low elite potential. Good old Jesperi. Seth Jarvis, 83 with medium top six. That's good. After last year, he scored something like 40 points. I like that. Give him the overall, which gives him something to work with and the potential to grow. Yep. Tony D'Angelo, 83 overall. I wonder what the defensive attributes are here. 85 defensive awareness, 84 shot blocking. See that? I'd have to look at how many shots these guys actually block before I can really declare what I think about the shot blocking, but I do think the defense is a little bit high. Three and a half star defense for who is, you know, objectively one of the worst defensive side of things defensemen in the NHL. Great offensive defenseman, but one of the worst defensemen in terms of defense in the league. I'd probably be closer to three stars on defense. Jordan Stahl, he's still out here. Fast, Nosen, Martinuk, Chatfield. Yeah, all fine with me. Goalies, Freddie Anderson in 88. I think Ranta should be higher than an 82. I think Ranta is possibly the best 1B in the NHL, if not a top five. Guaranteed top five of the best 1Bs in the NHL. He's getting older. He's having his injuries for sure. But I think Ranta deserves higher than 82 in my opinion. Freddie at an 88 is okay, but I think Ranta would be closer to 84 in my opinion. So probably a couple overalls for Ranta up and a, uh, you know, a couple overalls down for Natchez for my thoughts on the Hurricanes. The Blackhawks, Seth Jones at an 87. I think that makes sense. Keep him medium elite, but I think bump him down a little bit from last season. Taylor Hall at an 85 is okay. Bedard, 83 to start the his career. I think that's fine solely due to how high his puck skills and his shooting are already. I like that his defense is lower. I like that his physical is lower. Allow him to grow into that as opposed to forcing it to be higher just to get him to a higher overall. Already, 92 offensive awareness is a bit high. It's kind of forcing him to get to 83. If I put it down to 88, I bet he'd drop an overall or two. So... It's a vanity rating more than anything, really, but okay, 83 I'm all right with. Connor Murphy, Ty Radish, uh, Perry. A lot of these guys are just older guys whose potentials don't matter as much, like the Johnsons and the Perrys, Athanasiu, Eichel, Eichel, Reichel, Lucas Reichel, 80 overall, medium top six. I could probably see Reichel as someone who's closer to the 81, 82 range. 81, I think, would be okay for Reichel as opposed to 80. As we've seen, you know, 80 is kind of that fringe. I think 81 is more like this guy's a third liner, while 80 is more like a, this is a guy who could be a 13th forward. That's my experience. Zaitsev, Felino, that makes sense for him. 80 overall. Kurashev, 79, low top six. Okay. Korchinski, 78, medium elite, kind of like a Minchikov type of thing there. Kachuk, Entwistle, Jared Tenorti, there he is. All right, some lower overalls for sure at the bottom. Mrachik at an 82. See, Mrachik and Antti Ranta, I see Ranta as the better goaltender. And then as well, Soderblom at an 80. Devin Levi is also an 80. So this is my argument for why Levi and Ranta would be higher. But Mrachik and Soderblom at 82 and 80 respectively are fine with me. Let's start moving through this a little faster now. So we've got McKinnon and McCarr, two franchise guys. We haven't seen anyone franchise since we went back to Pasternak on the Bruins. So two guys right there, both 95s, both medium franchise no problem with me Miko Rantanen 93 meme elite works for me but I'd probably put him high elite Miko Rantanen is not I wouldn't say underrated but one of one of the more unsung type of superstars in the NHL Devontae's I think you know he's he's 29 now so I guess he, no, I'd put him elite 89 overall, big extension kicking in. I'd keep him at elite, actually, not top four. Laniskog, 88 if he plays again. Nichuski, 86 is fine. Byram, 86 with medium elite is quite the label after a cup. Not even one full season. He was great in the half season in 22-23. I'm not quite sure if he's 86 yet. Maybe more 84, 85. But Garrett, yeah, for sure medium elite. Just I'm not sure 86 just yet. He's been amazing, but he hasn't had the chance to showcase it in its, you know, complete package just yet. Hopefully this season will be the year in which he can do that. Sam Girard, very quietly, always a consistent 85 overall guy. Love to see it. Arturi Lekkanen, I think you could put him top six. Come on, Arturi. He plays so much top six, so many top six minutes. 
So medium top nine for him. I'd put it medium top six, I think. Josh Manson, 83. Thomas Tatar, there he is. Ryan Johansson, elite potential, I think, at an 83. I think you'd probably put him top six potential at this point. It wouldn't have him regress. If he's already an 83, top six potential wouldn't change much. Ross Colton, I like that for him. Jonathan Drouin, year in and year out, I have to fix Jonathan Drouin's potential. Medium elite, 81 overall. Now that he's 28 years old, the potential means a little less, but I still think if he's starting off as an 81, to have his potential so high when he's not 34 or 35 yet, it doesn't really make sense. I think he has to be medium top six. I have hope for Drouin. I wish him all the best. I think he has that talent somewhere down there, but I don't think he has the potential to hit elite levels, even if he strings together a few solid seasons. So I think that's a bit too high in Drew Wayne. It's been medium elite for years now. Wood, O'Connor, Cogliano, Legend, Jack Johnson, down the list there. Riley Tufty's in Colorado. I didn't even know that. Goalies, Gorgiev is an 86 fringe starter. I think I could say Gorgiev, now that he's proved himself a full season in Colorado, I think you can call him a starter now. He played his 62 games, he got his 40 wins, he had his solid numbers, even with a good team in front of him. I think we can give him starter potential. Francois, Francouz, you can give him the fringe starter, 84, that's fine. See, why is he an 84 and why is Ranta an 82? That's where it doesn't quite match up. I think Ranta should be on the same level as Francois here. And then 77, Prosvetov, 76. I think this is okay for them with the medium starter potential. I think Ananen, more of a fringe starter for him, while Prosvetov would have the starter potential, but I don't think any of them, either of them, really becomes anything in the NHL, unfortunately. There's Colorado, Columbus Blue Jackets now. Johnny Goudreau starts off as an 89 overall after his first year in Columbus. Bit of a downgrade after all he was doing in Calgary, but still an 89 overall, still medium elite. Kind of like Jonathan Huberdeau, who has the chance to still go up to those levels with the high overall and with that potential there, even though he's older than 26. So Patrick Line there is an 87. Line is just the injuries for Line, because really, the last few years, he's been putting up great numbers when he plays. If he was a point-per-game player the last two years in a full 82-game season, he would be higher than an 87. So, you know, why is Line an 87 and Natchez an 89? There's an inconsistency for me. So I'd have Line probably more like an 88. Wierenski at an 87, again, another guy who would probably be higher were it not for injuries. Severson at 85 feels a bit high for me. I think Provorov at 85 is okay, but Severson I'd probably see more like an 84. More just gut feelings for me there. Kent Johnson got a nice boost this year, starting off his sophomore season as an 84 overall with medium lead potential. The fifth overall pick in 2021. Very nice. Well done, Kent. Boone Jenner at an 89, Roslovic 83, Jake Bean, he's still got that potential. He's kind of been an 82 for a few years now. He's always a good simulation guy, but I like how he's kind of like that quiet, consistent guy like Sam Girard in Colorado. Marchenko 82, Boquist 82. I like that he has low elite potential. I think he still has that capability within himself if he gets the ice time. Yurichek 81 with medium elite. Yup, he is very solid. I love that. Good overall. I'm glad he's an 81 and not like a 78. Very nice. Andrew Peak underrated. See, this is a guy who needs higher physical and higher shot blocking. This guy's an animal. He throws hits and he blocks shots like a beast, yet he doesn't receive the attributes that he should because then it would be, oh, he's too high of an overall. If he deserves it, he deserves it. Texier at an 81, Bemstrom 80. There's Adam Fantilli, no picture, but there he is. 80 overall, medium elite, power forward. Only three-star shooting, interesting, and three-star physical. It's his puck skills at three and a half and his senses, 90 discipline as well that he has. So pretty well-rounded player, but I would think that his shooting accuracy should be a little bit higher. Even the physicals as well at a six foot two power forward, but he'll grow quickly as an 80 overall with that potential at 18 years of age. Crowley, Danceforth, Chinnikov, Foodie, who just got put on waivers in the real world. Good Branson, Sillinger, Olivier, okay. Goalies here, Elvis Merzlikens, good old Elvis, 84 overall, medium starter. Martin, who saw time in the NHL last season, 29 games played, still only AHL starter potential. I would give him backup. I don't think it would be crazy to give him backup potential. AHL starter feels a bit odd for a guy who may not be the best goalie in the NHL. But he's a full-time NHL roster guy. Whether he be backup or third goalie, he's a full-time guy. 
Tarasov at medium starter. I like that as well for him at a 79. So there are the Columbus Blue Jackets. Elvis at an 85 wouldn't have shocked me, but I think 84 is fair for him. The Dallas Stars, see, the guy like Jason Robertson, I'd almost say franchise, but I even Heiskanen. I think Robertson and Heiskanen should both be high elite guaranteed. I like their overalls at 92 and 90 respectively, but I think these should be both high elite guys. Rupe Hintz at an 89 is a great show of respect. He is super underrated. I think, you know, every year they say Barkov's underrated, all this, these guys are underrated. I think Rupe Hintz is easily a top three, top five most underrated guy in the NHL. So Rupe Hintz at an 89 is music to my ears. Pavelski 88 is fine. Jamie Ben at an 86 is nice because I think last year he was something like an 83, 84. So not quite back to what he was in the high 80s, but 86 I think is a nice little reward for him for what he's done over the, over the last season. Essa Lindell at 85. Duchesne 85 feels a bit high. I think he'd be closer to the 83, 84 range, kind of like a Ryan Johansson who got cut there. So 85 is not the end of the world, but I think I'd see 84. Keep the elite potential so that he stays at that overall, but I think he'd be an 84, while Sagan can stay at the 85, 86. A lot of elites here in Dallas, whether they be older players or not. Ryan Suter, elite. Marchment, medium bottom six. I think you can give him the top nine. Wyatt Johnston, 82 overall with medium top six. So a very nice boost for him after a great rookie season. Wyatt Johnson looking great in Dallas. Dadnov, Sam, Ste see Sam Steele and Radic Fax have the same overall. Steele barely found himself a contract. I'd probably see him closer to an 80, kind of like an Isaac Lundstrom there in Anaheim, as opposed to an 81 on the same page as a consistent year in, year out, third line guy like Radic Faxa. Thomas Harley, I could see him being more like an 81. I like what he's been showing. Lundqvist, a, even an 80 for him. Uh, Ty Delandria, ha uh, Hakenpa, how does he look? He has the four and a half star physical and the three and a half star defense. Again, blocks shots, throws hits. I'll probably edit that a little bit myself. Goaltending, Ottinger is a 90 overall, well-deserved, and Scott Wedgwood is an 82. Again, I don't mind the 82, but if a guy like Ranta is also an 82, Ranta needs to be higher. Detroit Red Wings now, Dylan Larkin, medium elite, 89 overall. I like it. I wouldn't have been opposed to a 90, though. I think he could get a little bit of a boost. He had a great year last year at 79 points. He had a career high. Yeah, you know what? I actually do mind this now. I do mind it. I think he could see a 90 overall. Maurice Sider at an 88. Is he respected? Four and a half star physical, five star defense. Okay, Maurice Sider, 88. Debrink at 87 works for me. But after that, Petrie at an 85. Eh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Petrie's probably more in that 83 range for me. He's one of those guys who would get a bump up or down of more than one overall. So Petrie, I'd see him more like an 83 now. I think he's still good. I'd keep his top four potential. I think he's still very serviceable, but 85, that's like what? Like Was Brett Pesci an 85 or an 86? And then Brady Shea was an 84? I don't think so. Perron, 85. Lucas Raymond, I feel like a lot of people have forgotten Lucas Raymond. He's still a good player. 84, medium elite. He's quietly one of those good young guys in the NHL. Maybe not as flashy, but yeah, Lucas Raymond works fine for me. Ghost, Comfer had a career high and he starts this year in 84. That's okay with me. Cop, Sprong, Fabry, yeah. Rasmussen in 82, and that whole range, these are kind of like mid, you know, these middle six guys. Justin Hall, I'd probably bring him, yeah, okay, 81's okay. But Jake Wallman, I think I'd bring him up a little bit. I think, yeah, maybe just a tad, maybe on the physical as well. I think Wallman's been doing some great stuff in Detroit. Costine could probably get a little bump. He had a solid year last season. Sherratt, Valeno, yeah, maybe low top six on Joe Valeno at this point. And goaltending in Detroit, Vili Husso at an 86, okay, and Reimer at an 82, works for me. Whew, I'm really taking my time on these, eh? Let's start flying a bit more. <laughs> Oilers now, McDavid, 97, franchise, great. Drysdale, 95, franchise, lovely. A couple more franchise players. Nuge at an 88, works for me. 89 wouldn't have shocked me. 88 works for me with the medium elite, no problem. Hyman, 87, okay, he's been good though. And 88 wouldn't have shocked me, but 87's fine. Ekholm 87, I feel like that's a bit high. I think 86 for Ekholm makes a bit more sense, and Nurse and 87 works a bit more since he's more physical. But yeah, okay. Yeah, like four and a half versus three star physical. Yeah, yum, yum, yum. Just little, little things. Vander Kane works. Evan Bouchard in 85 works for me with high top four. 
I'd almost say medium elite, but I think high top four is good. That works for me. Connor Brown, 83, is a bit high. I think I'd bring him down a little bit. He hasn't been doing really anything with Edmonton so far this year. I think he's more in that 82 range. Just a few things that I noticed. Just thinking out loud. Cody CC, Warren Fogle, McLeod, Kulak. Classic Kulak. Adam Ernie, Holloway. I could see Holloway being a bit higher. But once more, I'm being way too nitpicky. Vincent Dernay. Now, I'm not a big fan of Vinny Dernay. I think all he's there to do is basically fight. He has the four and a half star physical. I don't think he does anything on the ice super, super well. I don't say that to be mean. He's in the NHL and I'm not. Just I find whenever I'm watching an Oilers game, I feel like I'm seeing him do a lot of odd things and he's just out there to kind of just be a bruiser. Like I wouldn't call him a defensive defenseman. I'd almost just call him an enforcer. So he, oh, he's a full-time NHLer, so I'd probably bring him up to that 77 range at least. 75 is really like an AHLer. So as much as I don't think he's that great, he is a full-time NHLer. He is playing a lot of time in the NHL. I think he should be a bit higher than that. Goaltending, I'll be curious about goaltending. I'm gonna predict both 84 overall. Close, Skinner's an 84, Campbell's an 83. Both have starter potential. I think that's fair enough for those two goaltenders. Okay. Florida Panthers, Matthew Kachuk. Now, Matthew Kachuk, I could see him having high elite, kind of in that Jason Robertson category, especially it's in higher overall, 94. He had heart votes. I think back-to-back you know, -back 100 plus point seasons. I think high elite makes perfect sense for Matthew Kachuk here. That's what I would do in my roster. Same for Barkov, even though he's 28 now. Ekblad, that works. Montour up to an 88, big boost for him. Verhage, I got to give him top six potential. Having a guy like Verhage with 87 overall and top nine potential, as I said earlier, this will be a guy who will stay as a good overall, but due to his potential, will likely become an 86 or an 85 after a season or two, as opposed to maintaining 87 were he a top six potential player. So I would probably give him top six. Reinhardt, I'd probably give him up to an 87 overall even. Forsling is fine. Bennett is great. I like that for Sam Bennett. Anton Lundell, medium lead, 83 overall. He's such a solid player. I like him. Evan Rodriguez works. Ekman Larson. Ekman Larson, because I want to maintain maintain his 82 overall status. I suppose you can keep him at elite for that reason alone. Mahura, Cousins, these depth guys here, very good. Samoskovich, is that how you pronounce it? Mackey, I know Matthew Mackey Samoskovich, uh, first round pick in 2021. Here he is with the Panthers, 20 years old, 77 overall. Okay, and Mike Riley, that's a bit low for Mike Riley in my opinion. I think he's a guy who plays a lot of NHL minutes, so I'd put him higher than a 75. Bobrovsky, 86 overall, I think he should be higher than an 86. I know he's had his issues, but I think he should be in the 88 conversation. Stolar's at an 81, I suppose Spencer Knight is in the AHL. So I think Bobrovsky should have a higher overall. Those are my thoughts on Florida. LA Kings, yeah, Dowdy and Kopitar both have that franchise potential. Kopitar, 92 defensive awareness versus McDavid's at like 96. So Dowdy and Kopitar, I'd probably give them a little, especially Kopitar, I think he could still be an 89, 90 overall kind of guy. Kevin Fiala, 87, cry, fringe 88. Kelly Dubois, Kempe, Dano. Dano needs his, I, every game, every game. I downgrade Drouin and I upgrade Dano. This guy gets Selkie votes. You're gonna give him medium top nine potential or even forget the medium, just top nine, come on. Arvidsson top six, Mikey Anderson. Yep, Gavrikov, I could, I could see him in the 84 category. Trevor Moore, Kaliev, he's getting some nice steady growth. Good to see from Kaliev. Byfield, 81, still medium elite, good. A couple more seasons like he's shown though, I could see him going to low elite, you know? I, I, 33 points in 99 NHL games. I need to see a 40 plus point season in the NHL this season from Quinton Byfield. Bjorn Fott, Grunstrom, he's good, Grunstrom's good. Alex Turcott, yeah, this unfortunately makes sense for Alex Turcott. Brand Clark, I could see him more 78, more in that 78 category. And goaltending, Cam Talbot 83 and Phoenix Copley 81. I could see them probably both more like 82 as opposed to 83 and 81. But yeah, again, not the end of the world for me. 
Minnesota Wild, Kaprizov. Yeah, that's another high elite right here for Kaprizov. I think I would uh, want to see for a guy of his caliber. Spurgeon 87 works for me. Same for Brodeen. Brodeen, they always put him two-way, huh? I think he's more a defensive defenseman, though. I think people have always said that in the past. I'm not a, not watching every Minnesota Wild game, but I think Brodeen's more in that defensive defenseman category. Boldy 86, nice to see after his good season last year. Zuccarello, Erickson Eck. Kalen Addison, 83. Yup, he had his ups and downs last year. Yeah, 83 is okay. I wouldn't have been opposed to 82. Hartman, I think he could be in the 84 conversation. Marcus Foligno, Johansson. Yeah, Marco Rossi, medium lead. He still got it, thankfully, despite the injuries and missing time. I'm happy to see he's still medium elite. He can do it. Brock Faber's in the game, 79 overall. Yep, there you go for Brock Faber, for anyone who is curious about him being added to the game. Dewar, yeah, no big issues in Minnesota. And you got Philip Gustafson at an 86 with Flurry at an 85. Mm, yeah, I don't think I mind that. I guess that's okay with me. Biggest thing is Kaprizov needs to get to high elite. He can almost be higher than a 92 overall. You could almost make that argument. If Kachuk getting back-to-back 100 point seasons is a 94, Kaprizov and Robertson, they could be in that 93 conversation. Les Canadiens de Montréal, the Montreal Canadiens, Suzuki and Caulfield are the two medium elites, 88 and 86 overall, respectively. I think this is okay because they'll get good growth in a simulation. They'll grow quite quickly. I think Caulfield, if you had put him 87, I wouldn't have said that's too crazy, but I think an 86 is good after he had missed some of last season. And I wouldn't be shocked if he's an 88 or an 89 to start NHL 25, but 86 is okay for me on Cole Caulfield. Mike Matheson, underrated. I like the 84 for him. Kirby Doc, pff, rest up buddy, MCL, ACL, but fair enough overall for him. Monaghan, Gooley at an 83 is a very nice upgrade and that's a nice bone to throw to a guy who had a solid rookie season under the radar, missed about half the year. Maybe it's a bit too high even, but I think this is the type of guy that he will be this season. 83 overall kind of guy. David Savard, almost too high for an 83 overall. Again, I watch a lot of Canadians games. I didn't know he was 244 pounds, though. Big boy. Uh, Dvorak, 82. Anderson, 82. I think 82 is okay. 83 wouldn't have thrown me off too, too much, but I'm glad that he's not an 80 or an 81 as he's been in past games. Gallagher, 81, makes sense. Newhook, 81. I think he will grow very quickly to 82, 83, 84 by the time the next rosters come out and by the time NHL 25 comes out. Newhook has been very good so far from what we've seen. Jake Evans, also an 81. Same for Pearson with the low top nine for Evans. Uh, Jack Eye, high top six, 79 overall. That makes sense. Pinard, medium top nine, 79. Yeah, all right. Raphael Arvi Pinard. Slavkovsky, 79 with medium elite potential. That works for me, especially since he had his injury last season. Harris is very good. I like that for him. Baron, medium top four versus Harris, medium top six. I think I could see high top six or low top four for Jordan Harris. Uh, Ilanen, he's in the NHL. He's looking okay. I could see high top nine, but medium top nine is okay as well. Armia, unfortunately, yep, but he's tearing it up in the AHL right now. Kovacevic, I think he can be uh, low top six or medium top six even. Zeta, yeah, that works all right. Goaltending, Jake Allen, 83, and Samuel Montembeau at an 81. I think they are both an 82 type of thing. I'd say the same as Cam Talbot and Phoenix Copley. Allen and Montembeau are probably more on that 82 level each. And of course, there's Carey Price on the LTIR. Next up, the Nashville Predators. Roman Yossi, 94 overall. Sheesh, well-deserved, but yeah. 94 overall, 97 defensive awareness. What a tank out there. Philip Forsberg, medium elite, 88. Ryan O'Reilly, 86. I think that works for me. Barry, McDonough, Fabro, yep, yep. Tommy Novak, I think we could say medium top six or at the very least high top nine for Tommy Novak. Crazy year last year, a super quiet 43 points in 51 games. Tommy Novak, and looking good this year as well. So I would say high top nine at the very least for him. Especially if you're going to tell me that Cody Glass is low elite. I think Novak can be a little bit higher, but Cody Glass, there he is, 81, low elite. He's still got a little bit of something to show. Tomasino, medium top six. Carrier, he was good last year as well. Yusuf Parsonen, also a quiet year last year. I liked what he showed, 25 points in 45 games. I don't mind medium top nine for him, but Novak again, I'd say at least high top nine. Jeremy Lozon, Colton Sissons, he could be probably more like an 81, 82 kind of guy. 
Okay, and goaltending, Saros at an 89. I think it can be medium elite. And Lankin an 82. That works for me. All right. New Jersey Devils, Jack Hughes, 91 overall. High elite. Yep, makes perfect sense. Dougie Hamilton, nice respect to him at a 90 overall. Nico Hishi at an 89. Yep, as a, a very solid two-way forward, five-star defense. Yep, that's what I want to see from him. Jesper Bratt, yep, definitely deserves 88 overall with medium elites. I think he is also in that conversation with uh, Rupe Hints for some of the more underrated players in the league. Timo Meyer, I think he could be medium elite. I'm not sure why he's medium top six, kind of like an Alex Tuck kind of guy. Both Alex Tuck and Timo Meyer could be in that medium elite conversation and even get a little bump from 87. Someone who got a bump to 87 was Tyler Toffoli. He was usually in like the 84, 85 range, but Toffoli starts this year in 87. I love this for him. Five-star shooting, yeah, lovely. I love that, Tyler Toffoli. Siegenthaler also got a huge bump this year up to an 85. Whew, 85 for him with five-star defense. Sheesh. Wow. Okay. All right, Siegenthaler. Look at you, buddy. Dawson Mercer. Again, whoa. What's with the New Jersey Devils bias? I'm not saying it's undeserved, but this is like, these are some high overalls here. Mercer at an 85. Dawson Mercer last season, 56 points. Don't get me wrong. He's been getting better. He's great. 27 goals. But I don't know if that's consistent with some of the other overalls we've been seeing. I don't mind Mercer at an 85, but I want to see the consistency. So, okay. Good on you, Dawson Mercer. I see you. John Reno, 84. Palat, 83. Halla, 81. Okay, Luke Hughes, there he is, Luke Hughes, who just got added, 80 overall, medium elite, offensive defenseman, starting off that 85 offensive awareness, three and a half star defense, four star skating, the fourth overall pick in 2021, no sec, Alex Holtz, medium elite, he's still out here, the seventh overall pick in 2020, two and a half star defense, sheesh, he's been great in the AHL, so hopefully he can stick in the NHL. And goaltending, you got 85 overall Vanacek and 81 Schmid. I could see 86, 82 or 85, 82. I think Vanacek could be a bit high. Yeah, 86, 82, I could probably see for those two guys. Okay, there you go. New York Islanders now. We have the defense leading the way here with Pelic, Dobson, and Pollock. Wow. So Pelic, 88 overall. Barzal at an 88. I could see Barzal being a bit higher. Maybe the injury that did him in last season. But I could see Barzal in the 89 conversation. Big Bo, top 50 Horvat at an 87. I think he could also go up. He had a crazy year in Vancouver, which got him moved to the Islanders, where he definitely slowed down. So I guess that's why the overall is what it is. But I'd like to see him go higher in the near future. Noah Dobson, nice respect to him. He's a solid guy on the Islanders. So Pelic, Dobson, and Pelic, all 88 or 87 that's huge for them in a simulation for sure brock nelson mr 30 goals last couple seasons 36 37 i think he, i would you know 75 points last year if you had told me that he was 87 i think that would make sense as well so brock nelson i'd bump him a little bit anders lee scott mayfield i don't know why he has high seventh d when he's an 83 overall consistently let me see let's see these numbers here he had 107 hits 168 blocked shots he has four-star defense. You can give him the top six potential. I don't know why it's high seventh D. Pajot, Romanov. So such a good defensive core for the Islanders overall wise. Wallstrom. Yeah, want to see more from him. He's an 81. Engvall, Sezikis. Yeah, okay. That works for me. And you got Sorokin at a 92 overall. Woo! And Varlamov backing him up at an 84. Works for me. Very nice for the Islanders. Now we move on to the Rangers. Panarin, another guy who could be in that high elite conversation. 93 works for me. Adam Fox, 92. Five-star defense. He is so good. I won't call him the best defenseman in the NHL, but I don't think it would be crazy to say that Adam Fox has the best defensive attributes of the offensive defenseman in the league. I'm not talking EA attributes. I'm just talking in who he is, his attributes. So Adam Fox at 92 is nice. Zabanjad at a 90. Keandre Miller, big bump for Keandre Miller. Whew. Who just had his sophomore full so yeah his full sophomore season yeah, technically his third season but it was his full sophomore season he's played over 200 games he just had his best year all right so Keandre Miller on that same level as Bowen Byram but medium top four potential okay Kreider 86 Blake Wheeler at this point let the regression come I think he should be top six. 
allow that regression to happen. Even top nine, if guys like um, Alex Kalorn are top nine, I think Wheeler can be top nine. He didn't have the greatest year last year, 55 points, still good. That's still fine, but at 37 in his role now, making league minimum, I don't think 85 makes sense. He'll have a lot of trade value as an 85 on league minimum in franchise mode, but yeah. Truba, he's you know, Mr. Peripheral. He has the five-star yeah, five physical. I think the defense should be a little higher for the shot blocking and stick checking. If he's an 85 and Miller's an 86, I don't know. I, could, I think Truba should be in that 86 conversation. Heidel, Trocek could be an 85 for me. Lindgren could be an 84 for me even. Goudreau, Kako is low elite. Okay, so here's a guy that they've dropped to low elite potential now for Capo Caco. This is like EA's sign to say, wake up before it's too late. Alexis Lafreniere still an 82 with medium elite. Eric Gustafson, what, 82 overall, really? Eric Gustafson? Uh, okay, okay, I guess, it's a bit high. Benino, Schneider, yeah, good, Jimmy VC, Pitlick. Jones could be a bit higher. I think I could see him high top 60, 78 overall kind of guy. Shosturkin is a 92 overall, same as Sorokin, and Jonathan Quick backs him up as an 80 overall. Now on to the Ottawa Senators. So we see here on the Ottawa Senators, Tim Stutzla does get that high elite potential that we were calling for, for Robertson, for Kachuk, for Kaprizov. So Stutzla, well-deserved, and he gets it. Brady Kachuk does not get it, but he's medium elite 89 overall. I could see him high elite as well, but medium elite is nothing to sneeze at, so that works as well. Thomas Shabbat, medium elite. Tarasenko, medium elite to maintain his 86 overall. Yup. Giroux. I could probably see Giroux being higher than Tarasenko. So either a bump up for Giroux or a bump down for Tarasenko. Same for Chikrin. I could see a bump up for him. I think Chikrin's more than that 87 overall conversation with the Darnell Nurses of the world as we saw earlier as opposed to being kind of in that like closer to Brett Pesci type of thing. I know they're very different types of defensemen, but I think Chikrin, especially after last year, could be in the 87 conversation. Batherson, that's fine. Sanderson, 85, medium elite with his big extension. You got his picture now as well. There you go. Josh Norris, 85. Give him a full healthy season, making his almost 8 million. He'll be in that 87 range with the other guys soon enough. Kubalik, 83, I think is fair. Pinto at 82, if he plays, who knows? Brandstrom, it's a little bit high. Brandstrom, I know a lot of Senators fans are kind of, you know, fed up with Brandstrom in some ways. 82 is a tad high, I would think. Artem Zub, meanwhile, big fan favorite. He's solid out there. I could see Zub at an 82, 83, and Brandstrom more at like an 81. Matsu Joseph has been doing well, despite the trade rumors for him recently. Hamannick, 80. McEwen, yeah. Uh, Kelly, I could see Kelly in more in the 78, 79. Same for Ridley. Uh, there you have it. Goaltending, Corpusalo, 84, I think is okay. I wouldn't be surprised if it grows soon enough with him being a full-time starter for a few years now. But Forsberg, a very solid backup. 82, 83 would be my vote for him. Philadelphia Flyers, Sean Couturier will be back to his old 88, 89 overall self if he can stay healthy. 86 overall after playing, like what? He hasn't played in, was it 20 months that he was out? So he's back at an 86. Travis Konechny, very underrated in terms of overall. Not in the NHL, but very underrated for overall. Travis Konechny, I'd probably have him in the 88 category. Konechny is a monster. Point per game last season and does so much so well. If you're going to tell me a 70 point season from Natchez gets him to an 88, a 61 point season in 60 games for Konechny should get him in that 88 overall range. I love Travis Konechny as a player. I think he should be up there. Sanheim? Sanheim I don't know. 85 is probably the max for him there. Same <laughs> Atkinson, 84. I don't know. Atkinson, you know, he had 50 points. All right, I'll put some respect on his name. 84 is all right. Cam York, 83 is good. Scott Lawton's kind of in that Mason Marchman category where he's probably a bit higher in overall due to his physical, but the potential keeps him a bit, you know, keeps him where he is. I could see Lawton being in the top nine. Frost, medium elite, more like a top six or a high top six guy. I'm not sure about medium elite on Morgan Frost. Not quite sure on that. 
Owen Tippett, 86. I think Owen Tippett could be a higher overall than an 82. Solid 50-point season, almost 30 goals. I think he could be an 83, close to Atkinson's 84 even. Same for Farabee. He's getting paid 5 mil a season. He had 39 points, which was not quite what was expected. So I guess 82 for him makes sense. But Tippett, I would like to see a little bit higher. Noah Cates had a very quiet, solid season. Ristolainen, he, he is who he is. He has the physical and all that good stuff. Six foot four. 81's okay. I think top four potential should be where he's at. Walker, Hathaway, of course. He's a guy who can stay bottom six, in my opinion. Stahl, Paling, I forgot about Paling, Delorgi. Bobby Brink should be a higher overall, in my opinion, there. Oh, same for Forster. Point per game from what he showed last season. I don't know why he's listed as a center when he plays the wing all the time, but I could see Forster and Brink both being in the higher 70 overalls than Ryan Ellis. Yeah. Goaltending. Carter Hart at an 87 works for me. Urson and Sandstrom are both 78s. I think that's all right. Carter Hart, maybe closer to 86, but I think Hart is a guy who would get to 87 soon enough. He's been solid to start the season. Plus, I'm not sure if Ryan Ellis is a guy who should be a 70 overall just yet. The 70 overalls are the Shea Webbers, the Vorchecks, the Prices. Their careers are over. Ryan Ellis, it's possible, but I don't think it's over just yet. I'm not sure why they kept Clefbaum as an 84 for years when it seemed clear that he was done, but Ellis, they're kind of locking it in that he's over. I don't know. I'm not sure, ready to make that, that declaration just yet on Ryan Ellis. The Pittsburgh Penguins have Crosby at a 93 with his high franchise potential. I think he could still, you know, if you told me he was a 94, 95 in that dry saddle conversation, I wouldn't say that's crazy, but I think 93, 94 is okay for Sid. Carlson at a 91 after the season he had last year, absolutely, that's fine. Gino Malkin, I think he could be into the 91, 92 conversation. Malkin, when healthy, is a point per game plus guy, and he still has a lot of great players around him to keep that point production. So I think 91 would have been all right with Malkin. Gensel, same thing. I could see him more in the 89. 88, though, is okay. I don't want to take too long splitting hairs. Latang, 88, mostly probably due to the injuries of the last couple seasons, but he, when healthy, is a top 15 defenseman in the NHL. Rickard Raquel at an 85. He gets that ice time. He gets that production. That's all right. Graves, 85. K. Okay. Now, Brian, okay. This is a big one year in and year out. Brian Rust, this year, I think he has four goals in four games. This last year, fine. 20 goals, 46 points. But the year before, 58. The year before, 42 and 56. The year before that, point per game. Brian Rust needs to have some respect on his name. He is always, always, always an 83 or an 84 overall with medium top nine potential. Make him an 84 or an 85 with medium top six at this point. He's consistently been so good. Off year last year, but he's starting this season off well. He should get that boost. Riley Smith, 84. Marcus Pedersen, 83. I could see Pedersen more like an 84. P.O. Joseph might be even a tad high, kind of like Eric Brandstrom. Jeff Carter, eh. Lars Eller, love me some Lars Eller. Matt Nieto, Achari, Ruido, okay. O'Connor could be even, may, may even be a bit more. Tristan Jarry, eh. Fringe, I'd put him more like an 86. Ndalkovic, I could probably see him at an 81. So small little nitpicky alterations there for the goaltending. Jerry has let me down in too many fantasy hockey leagues. San Jose Sharks now. Lower overalls, kind of like the um, Blackhawks here, where it's mostly veterans who have higher potentials, like uh, Logan Couture, for example. Anthony Duclair is out here at an 85. Barabanov at an 84. like to see that. Granlin, Vlasic, there, you know, these high potentials to keep them from regressing too, too much, too, too fast. Mario Ferraro is a great player at an 82. So, of course, the stars out here are Hurdle. Duclair will produce in a franchise mode. Ferraro is a guy you can hang on to for a few years, absolutely. Uh, Mike Hoffman, you'd want to sell. LeBanc, you'd want to sell. Benning has a good contract. Zadina is a guy with some potential. This is interesting how the game deals with guys like Zadina. Sixth overall pick in 2018. Didn't work out in Detroit. He's in San Jose. Low top six, 80 overall guy. Kind of like what Yessi Puliyarvi has seen in recent years as well. So we'll see what Zadina becomes. If anything, Luke Cunning. William Eklund is an 80 overall with medium lead potential for all you Sharks fans out there. Zetterlund, who came in the uh, Timo Meyer trade, is an 80 overall with medium top six potential. Giovanni Smith, uh, Bordelot has medium top six potential as well. Henry Thrun, who's looked good 
Medium top six, 76. I could see more in the 77, 78. Mackenzie Blackwood and Capo Kakinen, 82 and 83 overall, respectively. Blackwoods looked good. I could see them both at 83. I, but I think 83-82 works out. I don't know if one is necessarily better than the other, but I think Blackwood will be the starter in 24-25. I'm not sure if Kakanen would resign for the money they'd be wanting to offer him. The Seattle Kraken have Vince Dunn as their top player as an 87 overall, as they should, rightfully so. Jared McCann at an 86, he'd love to see that. He's been good and he's on a great contract. Larson, 84, what's the shot blocking? 90, okay. Jordan Eberle, 85. Barkovsky, 85. Same for Gord. Matty Beneers. Ooh, nice update for Matty Beneers. 85 overall medium elite for the second overall pick in 2021. Very nice for Matty Beneers coming off the Calder Trophy. Bjorkstrand, Dumoulin, Alexiak, Schultz. As you would expect from a team that just went through an expansion draft not too long ago. A lot of these mid-80 kind of guys. Alexiak, Schultz, Schwartz, Wenberg, Tanev. Solid physical guy there. Four-star physical. Eli Tolvanen has his lower league potential. Channel legend and Data 782 Hall of Fame member Eli Tolvanen at an 82 overall. Love to see that from him. Uh, Yamamoto has medium top six potential as an 80 overall. So a bit of a a downgrade to Yamamoto for sure from what he's been in past games. Uh, I always got this name wrong. Is it Car is it Cartier or Cartier? I, I always got it wrong, but I know that he has been, you know, he's forced his way onto the team. He has forced the Kraken to say, we can't cut this guy. So Ty, there you go. He has a spot here, top nine potential. Grubauer is an 83. I could see him as an 84 though. I know he had a tough year last season, 894. I, you know, both his years in Seattle have been, you know, not on the greatest of squads. With Colorado, he was much better, but that was with Colorado. So I guess 83 is okay for him. Joey Decord to 79. I was surprised to see him. Okay, all right, 79. Now on to the St. Louis Blues. Jordan Cairo, 88 overall. Bushnevich, 88 overall. Two of these bigger players for the Blues. I think Cairo at an 88 is okay, but I think in sooner rather than later, he'd be in the 89 Clayton Keller range type of thing. Same for Bushnevich. He's very good. He's a quiet guy who puts up solid numbers. Rob Thomas, 87, is okay for me. Braden Shen, 86. Falk Hayes at an 85 is a tad high. Probably more than the 84, 83 category. Gloria. Pareko, Krug, Vrana, 84. I like to see that. Nick Letty, Saad, Kapanen, 82 is okay with me. Uh, Sammy Blay, 80. Yeah, you could squeeze an 81, maybe. Not much to say for the St. Louis Blues. Goaltending, it's Bennington backed up by Hofer. I think Bennington could be an 85. I think Hofer could be an 80 with high starter potential. I think this guy could be challenging for the crease this year and could have the crease as soon as next year. I don't think Bennington has been that great, thus the 84 overall, but they are paying him six million and they're not gonna be paying him to lose the crease to a rookie right away. So Hofer's gonna have to prove himself before that happens. The Tampa Bay Lightning, they yeah, they have Stamkos as a franchise player, not Kucherov. So Kuch, Hedman, Point, Stamkos, all 90 plus overall guys. I like all those overalls for all of them. Point, a very, very well-deserved 92 overall. Sergachev, 88. Yep. Chernak, 85. Yep. Quietly, always that solid, like, 200 hit guy. So, yeah, with the physical and the defense, that'll raise it absolutely. Hagel, 85. I like seeing some respect on his name. I wouldn't have minded. You know what? I think it's, it's low, actually. 30 goals, 64 points last season. Let's see 86 for Braden, uh, Brandon Hagel. Come on now. Uh, Anthony Chirelli, 84. Four, Carl, Co, Co, I could see 85 for him, but 84 is okay. Sherry, Paul could be 83 for sure. He's had a great start to the season as well. Perbix, full time guy. Jeannot, 79. Yeah. Uh, Logan Brown, I forgot that Logan Brown was here. Radish, Brent Seabrook still out here, another year on his contract. So yeah, Tampa, the top guys are the top guys. Hard to debate much about that. And of course, Vasilevsky, he's a 93. Three backing him up is Johansson, who is currently starting at a 78. Is Tompkins the backup or is it uh, Hugo Almfeld? I'm not sure about that, but Johansson at 78 makes sense. It's uh, Vasilevsky at a 93 is uh makes him the best goalie in the game actually as Sorokin and Shesterkin are both 92. Toronto Maple Leafs now Austin Matthews is a 93 with high franchise potential now if Matthews is high franchise 
You know, I think only McDavid is also high franchise. So you can't tell me that J-Rob and Kaprizov and Matthew Kachuk are only medium elite. Same for Marner. Give him high elite or even low or medium franchise. Ha- don't be so much of a stickler on the franchise tags. Come on now. So Marner, medium elite, 92. That's fine with me. Nylander, 89, medium elite. I think that's good as well. Tavares, slight downgrade, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Down to an 87 now as he's 33. Morgan Riley, 87. Bertuzzi gets the 85 overall. John Klingberg, low elite potential at an 84. I think that's a decent balance if he's going to be an 84. Okay. Domi, Liljegren up to an 83. Brody, Giordano, both with low elite to keep them from regressing too quickly. McCabe, Yarn Crow, Kampf, Gregor. They have a lot going on here in Toronto. A lot of names here. Matthew Nyes at a 78 with medium top six potential to start NHL 24. Second round pick in 2021. Power forward. All right. Jake Muzzin, Muzzin, one of those guys who you won't see again in the NHL. Goaltending, Samsonov is an 86. Okay. 86 is fair enough for him. And Jones is an 82. He's not even in the NHL. Oh, he's in the AHL, that is. And Joseph Wall, the actual backup as of right now, who's sitting there as an 80 overall. Okay, so a few things to tweak at the top, but the rest of the lineup makes sense for me on the Maple Leafs. The good old EA loved Vancouver Canucks now. I already see some disrespect out here. Elias Pedersen, 92. He gets the high elite. All right, it makes sense that he gets it, but why not the others that I mentioned previously? Quinn Hughes, 90 overall, medium elite. It's tough to get 90 overall, especially as a defenseman, so I don't mind it. Kind of like on that Dougie Hamilton level. I think this is okay for Quinn Hughes. These top two are fine. JT Miller, though, at only 87? You're telling me this is the biggest outrage of the entire thing so far, I think. How is Martin Natchez, after scoring 71 points once in 89, but JT Miller, who is consistently point per game plus, especially the last two years, 99 and 82 points the last two years, 30 goals, 50 plus, 60 plus assists. He's only an 87? What? 90 passing is solid, but it should be a little higher if he's a 50, 60 assist guy. I'd probably call him a a playmaker more than a two-way forward with his three and a half star defense if that's what you're gonna give him. He also hits quite a bit, so I think the body checking could be a little bit higher maybe. Uh, maybe the, sh- I don't know, something's got to be a bit higher. Offensive awareness, maybe, I think that would be it. That's the little, the little hidden thing for the overall. I, definitely, though. JT Miller at, in 87 is the biggest outrage. I thought EA would love their Vancouver Canucks, but no, JT Miller at 87, the biggest outrage so far. Kuzmenko at an 86, uh, he had the highest shooting percentage in like NHL history, or no, it was like a top 10, but it was crazy shooting percentage at 27.3, uh, he gets the five star shooting at least, but medium top six, I could go high top six on him, Heronik, okay, Garland 84, Brock Besser, great start to the year, 84, I guess you can give him 84 for now, Mikhail Beauvillier, Bluger, Myers, <laughs> give him top four at this point. Why is he low elite? Uh, Hoglander, Hoglander, Pullman. Where's, uh, what's his name? Where is Pud Colson? Is he not here? Pud Colson's not out here? I guess we'll see him in the AHL later on. But there you go. So, yeah, definitely some odd overalls for the Vancouver Canucks. Just a tinge of disrespect there. Demko gets his 87. I think that's fair enough. DeSmith at an 83. See, if DeSmith's an 83, then Ranta shouldn't be an 82 if we're talking about backups here. So, again, consistency. Vegas, 91 overall for Jack Eichel. He gets to be high elite. Okay, good for him. He gets high elite. Uh, Stone is elite with 90 overall. If he stays healthy, that is. Durability at 80? Yeah, that's about what it should be. Shea Theodore, Petrangelo gets elite, but Theodore gets top four. I think a Theodore could be elite for sure. Max so 87. See, why is Chandler Stevenson an 87 with medium top nine? That will make him into an 86, 85, 84 within a few years when he could very well stay at an 87. So if you're going to make him an 87, give him the top six in my opinion. Same for Carter Verhage. Chandler Stevenson and Carter Verhage both give an 87 overalls with top nine potential. Barbashev 85 works for me. Why is Carlson 85 with elite? Why does he get elite if he's older than... Tw- like, they're almost the same age, Stevenson and Carlson. Why does he get low elite and Stevenson get medium top nine? Even if it's exact. Exact top nine and exact elite. I digress. McNabb, Martinez, Haig, White Cloud. That's pretty high for White Cloud, but I think it's deserved. Wa, Carrier, Amadio, Amadio, Howden, Dorofeyev, who is a third-round pick, yeah, from 2019. Uh, Cotter, who was a full-timer pretty much last season. 
Uh, Korzak, I think Korzak could be a little bit higher. Second round pick in 2019, who's seen some NHL time. 10 games this past year, plus getting some NHL time this year. I think he should be in that 76 overall range, kind of like guys we've seen previously, if he's going to be in the NHL. So a bit low, I think, to have him at a 73. Goaltending situation in Vegas is tough. 85, 84, and 84 for Leonard, Hill, and Thompson, respectively. So in a franchise mode, I wonder how the uh, AIGM would take care of that. But I wonder what they'll do in the real world as well. This season, I don't know if Leonard's out for the whole year. I think he is. So maybe give him the Ryan Ellis treatment and everybody else and make him a 70 overall as well. But, you know, it's only probably for one season. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to navigate those those uh, those unknowns. Washington, Ovi has the franchise potential. Good. Carlson elite. Kuznetsov elite. Pacioretty still elite. I guess they want to maintain the overall. He has 75 durability. All right. At least there's that. For Max Pacioretty, Max Patio Ready, Kuznetsov at 86, I think that's okay. I wouldn't have been opposed to 87, 88, but 86, he's still elite. He coming off of, of a tough year. Yeah, okay. Tom Wilson, see, eh, I could see him top six. Backstrom's getting older, so it makes sense for him. Strom 84. For Hervery, he is such a solid guy in terms of the peripherals. So four-star defense, four-star physical, that's nice, but I could probably put it a little bit higher even. Rasmus Sandin, I think he's definitely a high top four kind of guy. I think he could be most certainly the future of the blue line in Washington. I love him. So 84, 83, 84, but high top four D for him. Sonny Milano, Mantha, still medium lead for Mantha. Still got the elite, the exact elite at this point. So I could see Oshi 83, 84 with elite and Mantha 82, 83 with top six. I think that's what the what I would see for Mantha and Oshi. Edmondson, Jensen, TVR, McMichael is a low top six. Okay. Same for Phillips at low top six. Lucas Johansson. Oh, that's a bit low. First round pick in 2016 who never panned out. Makes sense, but 72 low top seven uh, low seventh D. I would say probably give him I you know, he's getting some NHL minutes. I would say 75, 76 with low top 60. I don't think he'll become anything much, but he's playing NHL minutes. So 72, I think that's low for Lucas Johansson. Uh, Kemper in 86, notably, as I've said many times, one of the goalies that I don't believe in the most in the NHL, unfortunately. He has burned me in way too many fantasy hockey leagues, just like Tristan Jerry. I don't think Kemper is the real deal. 86 overall, in my opinion, is a tad high. I'd probably put him at 85. But bah, 86 won't uh, won't won't be too wild. I just don't think he's like a solid, consistent starter in today's NHL. But I'll move on. Lastly, the Winnipeg Jets. This has been a super long breakdown of the roster. I hope you're using the timestamps. I hope you've been enjoying the commentary. If this is something you like, because I've been saying way more than I probably should be. I'm giving like a commentary on players as opposed to just the overalls. But here in Winnipeg, Kyle Connor, Josh Morrissey, both 89 overalls, medium elite. I think that is well deserved for both of them. Shifley, 88. Ehlers, 86. Makes sense after the year he had last season. So, you know, plus the injuries. It wasn't that bad of a season, more the injuries. So I think this is okay for Ehlers. Pionk, high top six is a bit odd for me. I think top four makes sense. Niederreiter, good. Velarde, I'm excited to see what he can become in Winnipeg. Yafalo's fine. Schmidt, DeMello. Perfetti, medium lead, 82 overall. Yep. New captain, Adam Lowry. I could see him being more 83, but okay. Dylan, Appleton, Nemesnikov, Ma Matthew, uh, Morgan, excuse me, Morgan Barron, Rasmus Kupari, who they got also in the Pierre Luc Dubois trade with, with a medium top nine potential. Logan Stanley, big six foot seven Logan Stanley with a five star physical as per usual. Sam Berg, goaltending Hellbook is a 91 overall, backed up by Laurent Brassois, who is an 82. So, ladies and gentlemen, there are my way too in-depth thoughts on the 32 NHL teams with the new EA rosters to start NHL 24. What I'll go ahead and do now is run through each of these leagues, the AHL, the ECHL, then I'll do the major juniors, then I'll do all of Europe, and then I'll end with the alumni teams. If you want to see those, or a particular player on a particular team, go ahead and use those timestamps. I'm going to run through it quite quickly, so be sure to pause on the player that you want to see. You won't get to see the picture of each one, but You'll see their, their name, their overall, their potential, their age, their contract, all that stuff you've been seeing. And if you'd like, you can also listen to a little bit of royalty-free music as it goes along. So, without further ado, let's zoom through all of those.
Ladies and gentlemen, every overall and potential for every player in NHL 24 from all the North American, Major Junior, and European leagues. Hope that it was helpful for whatever question that you had. Let me know what you thought about my breakdown. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What would be the biggest change to your roster from what you've seen in the ones that I just showed you from EA's October 16th rosters, especially in the NHL? What do you disagree with the most, perhaps? And keep an eye out for much more NHL 24 content on the way, especially now that we have the PlayStation 5 franchise mode series starting soon once EA's patch is out. On top of that, how to make your roster salary cap compliant, how to get the most out of scouting, a regular season simulation with these EA rosters. What does EA think the league may be in 2023-24? Much, much more coming your way, so subscribe if you haven't already to be made aware of all those uploads. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and be sure to join us over on the Discord server, link in the description, as we're always continuing continuing the franchise mode and AHL conversation over there. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we continue to dive deeper into the NHL 24 experience.